The next example reads like this. A reversible heat engine receives 2000 kilojoules of heat from a source at 1000 Kelvin and 3000 kilojoules of heat from another source at 750 Kelvin. So, if we, have, we were to draw a block diagram for this uh, situation, we would do something like this. So, this is one reservoir at 1000 Kelvin, this is another reservoir at 750 Kelvin. So, we have a reversible engine. It receives 2000 kilojoules from here and uh, it receives 3000 kilojoules from here. It rejects heat to the ambient at 300 Kelvin. <coughs> All other processes are adiabatic, determine the work output of the engine and the overall thermal efficiency. So, this is how. Uh, we you know we would have drawn the block diagram for this there is nothing wrong with this block diagram now let us try to actually uh, uh, draw this on a pv diagram notice that um, the problem here appears to be made uh, difficult by the fact that it is receiving heat from two uh, reservoirs which are at different temperatures okay now since it's a reversible engine we can actually think of it as a corno engine working with two reservoirs Remember, all reversible engines operating between the same uh, reservoirs have the same efficiency as the Corno engine operating uh, between these two reservoirs. So, we can actually visualize this as a Corno engine and try to sketch the PV diagram for the Corno engine like this. So, let us say that this is, so we have, uh, so let us say this is the isotherm corresponding to 1000. So, let us say this is the isotherm corresponding to 750 and this is the isotherm corresponding to 300. So, let us say that uh, we start the Corno cycle from here. It receives 2000 kilojoules from the reservoir at 1000 Kelvin. So, that means the process goes something like this. Now, it has to get ready to receive 3000 kilojoules from the reservoir at 750 Kelvin. And as we said before, we now allow, uh, we, we now remove the Corno engine from the reservoir and move it to an insulated stand and allow the gas to expand until its temperature reaches 750 Kelvin. So, which would look something like this. So, after uh, 2000 kilojoules has been transferred here, we remove it from the reservoir, keep it on the insulated stand, allow it to expand until it reaches the uh, temperature of the second reservoir. Now, it is ready to receive uh, 3000 kilojoules. So, that means we go like this. So, 3000 kilojoules are transferred. Once uh, 3000 kilojoules of energy uh, is uh, transferred, we then remove the engine from the reservoir, put it on an insulated stand and allow it to expand until its temperature reaches 300 Kelvin, which means it is going to look like this. Okay. Now, we uh, reject uh, um, unknown amount of heat, which is uh, Qc until we go something like this and then it is compressed reversibly and adiabatically to the final state. This is what the cycle will look like. So, this is basically a Corno engine receiving heat from two reservoirs. Now, notice that I can actually uh, decompose this into two uh, Corno cycles and convert this instead of having one engine, I can actually convert this into two engines. So, if I continue this line like this, this will be one Corno engine, this will be another Corno engine that is also allowed because they will have the same efficiency, everything else is the same. That is also permitted. Okay. In fact, that is how we are actually going to do this. So, notice that we, uh, so we have two engines 1 and 2. We have split the engine into 2, which is allowed because uh, they are operating between the same reservoirs. So, engine 1 executes 1, 2, 3, x and 6, 1. So, engine 1 executes 1, 2, 3, x, 6 and 1. And engine 2 executes 3, 4, 5, x, 3. And the block diagram for this looks like this. So, what we drew as uh, engine R in our original illustration is the device inside this uh, box, gray box. Okay. So, we have actually now peeled the gray box and split it into two engines. 
and this is uh, this is what uh, the uh, layout looks like. Now, we can proceed with the analysis. We are asked to calculate the heat rejected to the 300 Kelvin reservoir that would be nothing but Q C 1 plus Q C 2. Now, the analysis is very very straightforward. So, for each Corno engine we may write this. For each Corno engine we may write this and the heat rejected to the uh, cold reservoir total heat rejected is Q C 1 plus Q C 2. With a, a little bit of algebra substitution of known values we can get Q C to be 1800 kilojoules. Now, the work produced by the engine is the total heat received minus the heat rejected Q H 1 plus Q H 2 minus Q C that is from first law cyclic integral delta w equal to cyclic integral delta q. So, if you substitute the numbers we get the w to be 3200 kilojoules and the efficiency of the engine to be 64 percent. <coughs> okay. So, this is a very very important uh, concept that a single Corno cycle can be broken into uh, two Corno cycles like this <coughs> and we can then treat each one individually. In fact, um, this forms the basis of uh, a very important concept that we will discuss in the uh, next module which is actually Clausius inequality. So, basically the Clausius inequality states that any reversible cycle may be written as the sum of an infinite number of Corno cycles. So, here we have written it as the sum of two Corno cycles. Clausius inequality generalizes that. So, we will look at that and then derive that uh, derive the Clausius inequality in the next module. But for now, you can see in a very simple case how uh, that can be true that a single Corno cycle can be broken up into two cycles like this and we can then proceed with the analysis in a very straightforward manner. Okay. This would uh, would have been impossible to uh, analyze further because you know you are stuck there. Whereas, if you write it in the manner in which we have written, the analysis becomes easier. Most important thing is, so now you understand that some of the theorems uh, and corollaries that we proved earlier, for instance, the efficiency of any reverse, all reversible cycles operating between the same reservoir is the same as that of a Corno engine operating between the same reservoir is very, very important because that forms the basis of this decomposition. <coughs> we need not know what cycle this uh, engine or executes. I can simply uh, say that it is executing or I can simply say that it is equivalent to a Corno engine which works like this. As long as I am given the fact that it is a reversible engine, I can always write uh, assume that it is a Corno engine, there is nothing wrong with that. So far, as I mentioned earlier, um, all the reservoirs that we have looked at, reservoirs with which the engines were having heat interactions. So, all the reservoirs actually uh, were assumed to be infinite in the sense that we could uh, uh, we could uh, supply any amount of heat from the reservoir to the engine or we could reject any amount of heat to the reservoir and its temperature will not change. So, that was something that we had assumed and we had proceeded with the analysis. In real life, uh, of course, you realize that there is no such thing as an infinite reservoir. Okay? All reservoirs are finite and there will be a change in temperature uh, if you remove heat from the reservoir or there will be an increase uh, or if you remove heat from the reservoir or if you reject heat to the reservoir. If you remove heat, then the temperature of the reservoir will decrease and if you reject heat, then the temperature of the reservoir will increase. Okay? So, we will now work out a couple of examples which illustrate how we can extend whatever we have done so far uh, for infinite reservoirs to uh, finite reservoirs. Okay? So, here we are given that we have a block of mass m which is this one, its specific heat capacity is given, it is initially at a temperature of T1. Okay. Now, a heat engine operates between the block and the ambient at a temperature of T naught. Determine the maximum amount of work that can be extracted. Obviously, when we want the maximum amount of work, we must uh, use a or we must employ a reversible engine that is what we have shown here. Okay. But what is not uh, given in the problem statement is whether uh, T 1 is less than T naught or T 1 is greater than T naught. 
In other words, is the ambient being used as a low temperature reservoir or a high temperature reservoir? Okay. So, here we are looking at a situation where T1, the initial temperature is greater than T0. Here we are looking at a situation where the initial temperature T1 is less than T0. Now, in both cases, the engine will develop work until the temperature of the uh, uh, block becomes equal to the ambient temperature. Okay. So, here heat is being continuously removed from this reservoir which is finite in size. So, its temperature keeps decreasing. Eventually, it will reach the same temperature as the ambient temperature. So, uh, the engine will stop developing work. Similarly, here heat is being rejected to the block and its temperature will continue to increase until its temperature reaches the ambient temperature at which point the engine will cease to operate. Okay, we have to consider both cases and we are asked to calculate the maximum amount of work that can be extracted. Okay, so, we look at an intermediate instant during the operation of the engine. Okay, so, during an intermediate instant, let the temperature of the block be uh, T. Now, an infinitesimal amount of heat delta q h is transferred from the block to the engine. The engine delivers an infinitesimal amount of work delta w and rejects an infinitesimal amount of heat delta q c to the ambient. Okay, so, this is what is illustrated here. So, at an instant, this is at a temperature of T. An infinitesimal amount of heat delta Q H is supplied from this reservoir. The engine produces a certain amount of work and rejects an infinitesimal amount of heat delta Q C to the ambient. Since it is a reversible engine, delta Q H over T temperature at this instant is equal to delta Q C over T naught. Delta Q H over T is equal to delta Q C over T naught, which means delta Q C is equal to T naught over T times delta Q H. Now, if we apply first law uh, to the block during this process, during this process, if I apply first law to the block, I get dE, change in total energy of the block is equal to du because there is no Ke or Pe change and this is equal to delta Q minus delta W, which may be simplified to give delta Q equal to the delta W is equal to 0 because there is no displacement work, there is no other form of work. So, delta W is equal to 0. So, from which I may write delta Q equal to mc delta T. Now, this is a negative quantity because uh, the temperature of the block is decreasing, which makes sense because heat is being supplied uh, by the block to the engine. So, if I consider the block as a system, heat is being removed. So, that means delta Q, the sign for Q is negative. Okay? Hence, the uh, heat received by the engine is delta Q H equal to minus m c d t. Okay. So, remember in our expressions for uh, the engine delta Q H, this is considered to be a positive quantity, this is also considered to be a positive quantity. We are taking the sign into account when we write expressions for work and so on, which is why we have written delta Q H as minus m c d t as d t is negative. So, then I may write delta Q C equal to this which uh, may then be integrated to give me this expression for q c. The total amount of heat supplied by the block from uh, start to finish is m c times t 1 minus t naught and the total q c is given by this expression. So, the work that is developed by the engine is equal to this for a finite reservoir. So, you can see that the concepts that we have developed for infinite reservoirs may also be extended and used in the case of finite reservoirs, which are much more realistic because almost all reservoirs in nature are finite reservoirs, their temperatures will change. In fact, when you do a course on applied thermodynamics, you will probably uh, learn that this expression here, the maximum work that can that we can get from this block is actually called the exergy of the block.
this is actually this quantity QH that the block supplies is called as the energy that is contained in the block, whereas this work that we can get from this is called the exergy of the block. Okay, that is a very, very important concept which you will learn in your second level thermodynamics course or applied thermodynamics course. Now, I leave it to you uh, as an interesting exercise to try to draw the uh, cyclic process undergone by the block from beginning to end. Okay? I leave it to you as an exercise to try. It is actually quite interesting to try and draw. Please try it. The second example involving finite uh, involving a finite reservoir looks like this. In fact, we also actually need to do this for the second case when we have done this only for the first case, right? When T1 is greater than T0. I uh, leave it to you as an exercise to do this for the second case when T1 is less than T0. Okay, so here T1 is greater than T0 that we have completed. So I leave it to you as an exercise to do the case when T1 is less than T0. It proceeds along similar lines. So, notice that a positive amount of work is developed in this case and in this case, even when the temperature of the block is less than that of the ambient. We can still run a heat engine like this, which tells you that exergy of the block is positive when its temperature is different from that of the ambient temperature. Here, its temperature is higher than that of the ambient. Here, its temperature is lower than that of the ambient. In both cases, exergy is positive. That is, uh, that is a very, very important concept. Uh, that you will learn in your next level course. All right. So, here is the second example. So, here uh, instead of a block that we saw before, here we have a piston cylinder apparatus uh, which is maintained at a constant pressure. So, this is a constant pressure apparatus. And here it is explicitly given that this is initially at a temperature T1, which is greater than T0. Okay? So, some amount of heat is supplied by the uh, constant pressure uh, reservoir, which is then uh, used by the reverse uh, reversible engine to calculate, I am sorry, reversible engine to generate uh, useful amount of work positive work and an amount of uh, heat delta Q C is rejected to the ambient. So, this of course, is the illustration of this uh, engine at an intermediate instant. So, at an intermediate instant, this is uh, what the, uh, uh, the setup looks like, Okay, because we are asked to calculate the maximum amount of work, which is why we have taken it to be a reversible engine. So, the uh, this problem is very similar to what we saw before except for this uh, uh, reservoir, which is now a constant pressure piston cylinder mechanism. Okay? So, we proceed in the same manner as before because the engine is reversible, we can write uh, delta Q C over um, uh, delta Q C over T naught is equal to delta Q H over T from which we get this expression. In the same manner as before, we apply first law to the uh, gas inside the piston cylinder device. So, d e is equal to d u, no change in k e or p e and uh, this is equal to delta q minus delta w. The displacement work is non-zero in this case because the piston uh, as work is being supplied, the piston moves inwards. So, this is equal to p d v. So, delta q equal to d u plus p d v which may be written as d h is a change in incremental change in the total enthalpy of the system or the gas inside the piston cylinder device which may be written as MCP dt. And again dt is negative because the temperature is uh, decreasing. So, we write delta QH the heat supplied to the engine is minus MCP delta T. So, that this is a so that this is a positive quantity. And we proceed in the same manner as before to get uh, QC equal to this and the work developed by the engine as being equal to this. Okay. So, once again uh, this quantity here the maximum work that we can develop this is called the exergy of the gas that was inside the cylinder at time t equal to 0. So, initially the piston cylinder mechanism contains m kg of a perfect gas at a temperature T1. So, the maximum work that it can develop is the exergy of that gas that is that is what we have 
uh, written here. So, this uh, concludes um, our examples involving application of second law, concept of absolute temperature, uh, direct and reverse engines, reversible engines and so on. Most importantly, engines operating with infinite reservoirs and engines operating with finite reservoirs. Uh, what we will do in the next lecture is uh, start our discussion on uh, entropy.